here we show the uh, another proof for the Hobby inequality, which is based on so-called free lines lemma. Uh, this is very advanced proof, uh, uh, which can be adjusted to many other circumstances, and that's the reason I want to show this proof to you. So the free lines lemma, it's the lemma which states something like this. It's the result from complex analysis, uh, which is a direct consequence of uh, what is known in complex analysis, uh, the maximum principle, and that's how it sounds. Uh, the free lines lemma says, if I have a function, f, which is defined in a strip, s, like this, it's the point, it's a strip uh, on the complex plane uh, with the all numbers, for which the imaginary part between, oh, sorry, real part between 0 and 1, so it's a strip like this, is the real axis, is the imaginary axis. So we have a function which is analytic in this, in this strip, and which is also bounded and continuous in the closed strip, so the strip which has the boundaries included, Again, it's the type of. So. Then you can conclude the following inequality: that the if you take the some middle point here, or in fact if you draw a line, a vertical line through this middle point, like this, then the value of your function or the absolute value of your function at this middle point is controlled by the product like this, where and that is true for every theta between zero and one where m0 is the max of your function on the left-hand side of the strip and 1 is the max of your function on the right-hand side of the strip. In fact, this point theta can be anywhere on this line, so in fact, uh, effectively what Lemma says is that the max of the function over the middle line is always controlled by this combination of maximums or maxima of your function on the boundary of the strip. Uh, that's the reason why it is, uh, sometimes I call this a maximum principle, although it's not directly the maximum principle of complex analysis, because maximum principle in complex analysis, uh, canonically, it, is, it, it, it only applies to bounded domains on the complex plane. Now we can, I can show you how we can prove the held inequality again, the same held inequality, with the help of this free lines lemma. The technique is really powerful. It, it enables lots of different adjustments and generalizations and uh, uh, so you have two functions little f from fp and g from lq and remember the exponents p and q they connected by this relation all you have to do you have to consider the a function on complex plane and that's the function I'm talking about this function this is a function which is defined on a complex plane on, in fact on the whole complex plane the exponent here Exponent here is defined by this formula when a is positive and just set zero when a is zero. So when this absolute value returns zero value, we just take zero. Otherwise, we take this value. The same about this one. This is an analytic function. It is a continuous function. In particular, it will be analytic in the strip and continuous in the closed strip. Uh, boundedness of this function. Uh, that's something which have to be has to be argued. Uh, in fact, uh, when you knew when people use this method, why free lines lemma, they normally assume assume more than just this. So they say let's just assume a little bit more about f and g. We assume that f and g in fact essentially bounded functions and one of them has finite support where this symbol support of f it stands for this subset where my function uh, the absolute value is strict, strictly bigger than zero so the way the function has non-zero values so in fact i will prove the held inequality with these extra conditions uh, at first you may think that this will make the proof uh, rather restrictive but we will remove these conditions uh, via standard trick or a standard approximation later i'll make the comments on that too uh, so although I'm, I'm proving the held inequality under this more strict conditions, not just f from LP and g from LQ, but also with the extra assumptions they are bounded and one of them with finite support. 
this in fact doesn't restrict the proof at all because there is a standard standard trick how to remove these assumptions and I will show it later. So, but if you have these extra assumptions, we can claim that my integral here is controlled by the actually can be controlled by the function like this. These are two numbers and this is just the indicator of the support of my function f. By the comparison principle, we have this trivial bound bound for the function f of z. That's why my function is bound. So in fact, after after I just introduced these extra assumptions, this capital F of z satisfy, satisfies both requirements of the free lines lemma. It is analytic in the open strip, it is bounded and continues in the closed strip like that. And now we can use the free lines lemma and that will give you the inequality straight away. Look at this. If uh, first I'll observe that if I take my function f capital on the left hand side, it like this, if I plug here it and it, uh, I will end up with something like this. I just observe that these two complex numbers, they are just modulo one complex numbers. And so by comparison principle again, you can just drop these two factors and you can control your absolute value of this integral by just the integral of this thing, which we know is the pth power of the LP norm of the function f. So m0, the supremum of these values across all t is m0 value. The max of my function on the left boundary is controlled by that. Similarly, you can argue that the max of the function over right hand side boundary will be controlled by something like this. If you put here the value 1 plus it, this will be just a pure imaginary num number which will render this factor unital. And this will split into one factor, g to the power q, and the other factor uh, with the pure imaginary exponent, which will render this factor again unital. Now, all I have to do now, I have to observe that if I take q like this, if I take q number one on one, sorry, if I take theta, sorry, if I take theta, all I have to observe now that if I take theta here equal to 1 on q, then the f capital function at this particular theta, if you put here 1 on q, here will be just 1. Here, because of this relation, will be again 1, so you will have something like this. Now the right hand side will be the product of these two m's with the exponents like that. And again, due to this relation, this will be just the product of p and q norm of g. And that's, that's the held inequality. Again, that's a held inequality under this extra condition, but this is a easily removable condition, and I will comment on this next uh, in my next comments, hopefully.